There's a hip way to play media on Android. Whether you've got viewers or listeners, there are modern ways for them to engage with your content. Hi, I'm Paula Mertzma, and in this video, we'll be exploring modern media playback on Android. Media apps enjoy many surfaces on Android, from phones to tablets, smart TVs to smart watches, and everything in between. And the type of media can be equally diverse. Movies, TV series, video clips, workout sessions, podcasts, or just plain old music. But they have one thing in common, the user is in control. So let's take a look at the different ways in which users can control media. The Android platform itself offers a few surfaces through which media can be controlled from outside your app, in particular through the dedicated media controls near the quick settings on phones and tablets, and in the media overlay on Wear OS. Some devices, such as TVs through remote controls or Chromebooks with peripherals, allow controlling media playback through dedicated buttons. Of course, media can also be controlled through accessories like wired headphones and Bluetooth speakers or earbuds. And finally, let's not forget that users may be controlling media by voice through the Google Assistant. Your media app likely consists of two main parts. First, a media player which renders audio and video content, and the user interface which shows what's playing and provides a way for users to control playback. However, in this architecture, the Android system and other apps running on the device aren't aware that media is being played, and so they can't provide a convenient way for your user to view and control the playback. And this is where the Media Session API comes in. Media sessions provide a universal way of interacting with an audio or video player. By informing Android that media is playing in an app, playback controls can be delegated into that app. Integrating with a media session allows an app to advertise media playback externally and to receive playback commands from external sources. The media session can then delegate these commands to the app, where it can apply them to control its internal media state. By connecting your player to a media session, you can expose information about what you're playing to the system and enable those mechanisms we talked about earlier for controlling playback from outside your app. There are four key components that your app should provide into the media session. First, the playback position and playback state are essential for the platform to reflect what the current status of the media is. Next, informing the media session of which actions are supported brings those controls onto the various surfaces for the user to interact with. The content metadata is critical when informing the user what is playing. And finally, queue items allow the media sessions to know what's up next and can take care of showing previous and next controls where applicable. While it's easy to visualize how this comes together in Android's media controls, also consider the voice and peripheral interactions we looked at earlier. Now let's look at ways in which the media session provides actions back into your app. Media session will only serve as actions to users that you've declared to support. Those actions may be basic playback controls like play and pause, stop, or skipping to the previous and next piece of content. In order to support seat controls, it's essential to provide accurate playback position and state. And to get that nailed, you can even specify the playback speed. Custom actions can also be specified, for instance, to allow you to implement toggling captions or setting ratings. There are some great resources on how to integrate your app with media sessions. If you're using ExoPlayer, check out What's Next for Android X Media and ExoPlayer by Don Turner and Android Lewis from the Android Media team. You can also find an in-depth guide on media session on developer.android.com. And links to these resources and more can be found in the video description below. Once your implementation is complete, there are a few techniques for validating that things work correctly. Let's first take a look at some of the automated validations. The Media Controller Test app allows you to test the intricacies of media playback on Android and helps verify your media session implementation. Its verification testing framework offers one-click tests that you can run to ensure that your media app responds correctly to a playback request, which works both on mobile devices and on TV. Media Session Validator is a tool that provides an easy and automated way to verify your media session integration on Android TV. As an added benefit, it also verifies the prerequisites of supporting Cast Connect in your TV app. If you prefer to manually validate the media session implementation, for instance, for integrating tests, you can inspect its state as different media actions are issued. Let's take a look. To dump the state of the device's media session, run ADB Shell Dumps This Media Session. In its output, we're looking for a few things. First, find the media session with a tag that you've defined, which should correspond to your application's package name. 
Inside the details, look for some key pieces of information. The state of active should reflect when media should be able to be controlled. Also validate that the media session corresponds to what is playing. Finally, let's parse the contents of the integer for actions. We can confirm which actions are present from the bit mask encoded by the actions value. The values of these actions can be found in the playback state reference. A set of media commands can be issued through ADB shell media dispatch, including play, pause, rewinding, and so on. Note that the more complex actions, such as seeking, rating content, or performing custom actions, cannot be invoked in this manner. Let's review a checklist for building a great media experience on Android. First, make sure only a single media session is being used in your app. Check the places where your media session is created and validate that there's no pathway for duplicate ones to be created in parallel. Critically, mark the media session as active and inactive when necessary. If you don't support media playback in the background, this will generally be in your activity, your fragments, on stop, and on start methods. If your app plays music in the background, the media session should be marked as active when the service starts and inactive when the service is finished. Third, be sure to always be setting and updating media playback state. When you first create the media session, set the playback state. When the state changes, for instance, because it transitions from playing to paused, update it. You do not need to periodically update the playback state just from regular playback, like updating position every second during playback. Android will calculate the new position from the playback rate, so you'll only need to provide updates to the playback state when it actually changes. You should also ensure to update any playback actions that you support. Getting this right is difficult, but it's made much easier with Android X Media 3, because when it used in conjunction with ExoPlayer, the player takes care of this for you. For more information on Media 3, click the What's Next for Android X Media in ExoPlayer chip up here. Fourth, Set and update the media metadata. When you first create the media session, set the media metadata. Update it when the media metadata changes, for instance, because the next song or episode has started. Using media items in Jetpack Media 3 in conjunction with ExoPlayer largely handles these cases for you. An important property of the metadata is the duration. Without it, the media style notification does not show the seek bar on recent API levels. Fifth. Verify handling of the core commands. Ensure that the app handles play, pause, stop, and seeking correctly, but also ensure that the app handles the play next and previous commands if your app content is sequential, like a playlist or a TV series. Sixth, I recommend performing a full validation using the techniques we covered earlier. And finally, release the media session when necessary. It's most sensible to do this when the media player is released as well. In closing, there are a few common pitfalls that we've seen in media session implementations. Some developers sometimes choose to handle raw key events instead of handling media actions from media session. This inhibits you from expanding your app to support more delightful interactions, such as seeking, submitting ratings, or handling custom actions. A frequent mistake for video apps is to keep the media session active when the user backgrounds your app. If your media doesn't support background playback, be sure to set is active to false on its media session. Finally, be wary of ways in which lifecycle changes may affect the way actions are handled. Consider, for instance, that invoking Google Assistant may cause your app to lose focus when a user requests the media to pause. Consider in that example, if your app correctly pauses the media when the focus is returned. I hope that this overview helps you build excellent media experiences on Android that lets users interact with your content in novel ways. To learn more, check out our documentation and other resources linked in the video description below. And while you're checking out that video description down there, why not hit the like and subscribe?